looking forward to our talk. Yeah, I'm looking forward too, but I have to find myself a little bit in the mm -hmm. middle. Right. Many books there. Mm -hmm. Is it okay? This would be perfect for us, yeah, to see. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Um, can um, can you get a little closer, louder, or something? Uh, yes, I can talk louder like that. Yeah, fine. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh -huh. Well, I'm. Uh, we'll change from German to to English. Um, excited because uh, since I never met you in person I'm, I'm happy that you can join us here with those jazz clarinet interviews so uh, i have the chance to to talk to you and to listen to all your experience and stories you have to tell because you're around quite some time with quite some time yeah. with, that, with that birthday in 1929 do you remember that <laughs> not exactly the day but uh, uh, of course, as this ages ago, mm. really ages ago. Mm. Um, yeah, I don't dare to count, <laughs> but this, is, uh, this year is going to be 91. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just did the research. From where do you speaking from? Excuse me? Uh, from where do you speak from? From Russia. From, from where? Russia. St. Petersburg. Oi! Mm -hmm. That's far away. Yeah, there's... I know the town. I had been there on tour some 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. A wonderful town. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Should come back. I hope so. <laughs> so, anyhow, how is your clarinet? Well, uh, well, I'm fine. Yeah, I still, still love to play. And... Uh... Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but steady group, the quartet. Um, well, right now I, I'm I'm staying steady home, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I used to have some some groups that are that are existing that are with the same lineup, different bands. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I saw that you are having a lot of projects still going and no ways still of going, going down, huh? Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah, I'm preparing right now mm -hmm. uh, for the next album, and um, I'm almost ready of writing and mm -hmm. uh, composing. Yeah, and we are really all looking forward uh, to go to the studio. Yeah, yeah, and concerts are going on uh, very reduced now. Yeah because of the corona. Mm -hmm. I don't know the situation in uh, Russia, probably similar, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. You have to be careful. You <laughs> wear a, are you wearing a mask? Yeah, I do, yeah. Not for the interviews, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is, it, uh, is it an order from... Uh, no, no. No. The, if you... You can or you can't. Yeah, right. Yeah. In St. Petersburg. Well, I'm basically, I'm, uh, my origins are in uh, Switzerland, Zurich, and they have, they need to wear masks if they go into a shop or into. Yeah. Some... Are you going forth and back, Switzerland and Russia? Yes, I used to. Yeah, I used to. Yeah, before that situation. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. used to do that. But your actually home is Petersburg. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. You grew up there too? No, uh, I grew up in Zurich, and in 2015, yeah. um, I started uh, playing concerts in Russia. And last year, I met uh, my now wife, and we married. And this is my new. That's the reason here. you stay in. Of course, Russia. of course. You speak yeah. the language too. No, unfortunately, no, no. I, 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 That's I'm difficult. I yeah, guess for us. Yeah, yeah because uh, different. Uh, science and yeah everything is complete the other way around <laughs> exactly yeah, yeah. but yeah. you speak english with your wife i guess sure sure yeah english yeah. is connecting yeah thanks god mm -hmm. so uh, are the russian young people open for jazz 
Yeah, it's actually, I mentioned it to other, other guests on the show here, that it is a, a strong scene here. It's mainly mainly bebop, uh, that kind of that kind of yeah. style. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, like everywhere, uh, young musicians too, that are playing all kinds of music and um, it's, it's a good thing. talented people, I guess. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And clarinet just as well. Like and clarinet I am aware of. Um, not many. Not many, but I'm aware of two, three people that play, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and you like Benny Goodman, I would say. You're a Benny uh, Goodman fan. Well, uh, or I used to be. Yeah, I, mean, I think it's never over, but yeah, I, I grew up with that, with uh, with the Hall brothers and Goodman recordings and things like yeah. that attracted me, yeah. yeah. How, about, how about you? How, how did you start uh, to, to pick up the instrument and uh, like to... Well, um, yeah. for the radio, uh, as you know, I was born 29, and if I had been ready for school in the morning at 7 oh. or 8, I heard some music, music clarinet and accordion, mm. which is a nice combination still. Uh -huh. And I became interested in the clarinet and my father bought me at the time knowing nothing about the clarinet so mm -hmm. whatsoever, a C clarinet. Mm. And boom system, which was boom right away, huh? Mm -hmm. Right away, uh, unusual for Germans, mm -hmm. you know. Right. It was the only clarinet after the war which was available mm -hmm. at all. So, not knowing nothing, mm -hmm. so I just think I'm, I started to take lessons mm -hmm. on the C clarinet. Oh. I said, I don't know what happened to the instrument, no <laughs> idea. But I was fascinated and uh, unfortunately at the time I had been extremely lazy. In other words, I didn't practice. Mm -hmm. So I had a wonderful teacher from the Leipzig uh, Gewandhaus Orchestra. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, he played Böhm at the time already uh, the reform boom, okay, which is a German war, uh -huh. and uh, but the boom fingerings, you mm -hmm. know, and so um, he said after a while, I wrote a letter to my mother, uh, Rolf is unfortunately extremely lazy, <laughs> and under the circumstances, if he goes on like that. I wouldn't teach him anymore. So that was a very strong statement. <laughs> and my mother told me, okay, you have the choice. Mm -hmm. If you don't start practicing now, I don't care what you do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, then I really I took it more than serious all mm -hmm. of a sudden. Mm -hmm and practice five, six hours a day mm -hmm. and and still do, but not five or six, mm -hmm. let's say two, two and a half. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Not to keep yourself in shape, mm -hmm. but uh, develop, you know, mm -hmm. you know, it's always a way to get better, better, mm -hmm. better. Oh, it all depends on the setup, what you're yeah. playing, and what kind of mouthpiece, and you know, mm -hmm. probably it's a story. Mm -hmm. um, Interesting that you stayed so active all those years and uh, never lost interest. No, I never lost interest. Quite the opposite. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have different combinations, of course, of my steady quartet. Mm -hmm. I don't know if, um, are you familiar with some of the recordings? Yeah, I did a, a bit of research on your website and I uh, listened to some um, things that I found, yes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, the quartet consists of uh, the usual setup and piano and bass and drums. Mm -hmm. But I like strange combinations just as well. Uh, for instance, one album I did among the quartet 
Dios a veces uh, obo solos from the Berlin Philharmonic mm -hmm. and uh, with a cello and clarinet, mm -hmm. which is a nice combination too, mm -hmm. and doing unusual things. Yeah. And this is the last album. Or that's the album that will. Uh, the one before the uh -huh. last. One it's called mm -hmm. Spotlights. Spotlights, okay. Mm -hmm. Spotlights, like mm -hmm. a spotlight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, and uh, you have a, a younger brother, which you used to or still play duo, right? Yeah, we had a mm -hmm. concert for three weeks ago. We mm -hmm. play, of course. Um, we know each other pretty well, exact 72 years. Mm -hmm. I met him when he was 30 minutes old. <laughs> <laughs> and the next morning, in this night, he was born mm -hmm. at one o'clock in the morning. And the next following morning, around 9, 9.30, I started practicing clarinet right into the place he was sleeping. Mm -hmm. You know, and he grew up in the true sense. We yeah. introduced him right away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> beautiful. And you no, guys, he is a brilliant piano player, and uh, we played Newport. We played mm -hmm. in the States, and mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Are you familiar? Since you are a former Goodman fan, or are still. Yeah, so, I knew him very well. I'm aware of that. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I played in his band for two years, mm -hmm. and he even let me play in the evening. Beautiful. Yeah, except, except, but wait, that's the only 20 the minutes. Mostly the first 20 minutes. <laughs> he was interested in young players. Really? Oh. Yeah. Especially wow. clarinet, of course. And uh, he was like a father figure. Mm -hmm. And to me, he was extremely nice. And um, he invited me many times to his apartment. Mm -hmm. And we talked, of course, only about clarinet. Of course. <laughs> and uh, about, he was. Uh, other people, let's say, other members of the band, you mm -hmm. know, there was never a question he wouldn't invite anybody. Mm -hmm. He was a very lonesome mm -hmm. fighter. Somehow you had a good connection with him, Some, something went I personally, well. yes. Mm -hmm. Especially if I told him that my mother was Jewish. Okay, that was the introduction. <laughs> he opened up right away. Yeah, mm -hmm. or more than before, let's say. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And it's by the way the, the only picture that I found of Goodman uh, with another clarinet player next to him playing the same instrument. I, I, I there is a photo I found I found when googling that you are playing the clarinet and Benny Benny is behind behind yeah, you. Yeah, was in the United Nations building in New okay. York. Was a concert, mm -hmm. but he had another clarinet player years ago, uh, a Swedish guy. Stan mm -hmm. Hasselgaard. Right. Are you familiar with the name? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The recordings, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he featured mm -hmm. him quite a bit. Unfortunately, uh, Stan had a deadly accident, car accident okay. in the States. And uh, yeah. he was, let's say, besides Putty Wickman, uh, the Swedish clarinet yeah. player. Yeah. Liked a lot this putter. Yeah. Gone too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And you started to play with your brother uh, while being teenagers? And that lasted until now? Or when did that happen that you guys started to play together? Are you talking about the material that we play? Or no, what, I mean, what you mean, when did you start playing with uh, Joachim? Ah, what, what age? Very early. Very, very, mm -hmm. very early. Uh, uh, I had been six years in the States, and when I came back, uh, he was maybe, let's say, 
18, 19 years mm -hmm. old, I had a, a trio and he invited me to a rehearsal. And mm -hmm. there was a very well organized, uh, outstanding, very modern piano trio. So mm -hmm. I said, wonderful, maybe we can do something together. Mm -hmm. So then we started playing concerts and festivals and mm -hmm. a new repertoire and, mm -hmm. um, and almost each record I did, he played. Okay, interesting. Yeah. And I found some, some uh, the Mad Rockers and Total Space, maybe you can... <laughs> Maybe you can give. <laughs> uh, I played the electric clarinet. Yeah, time. right. But what was that? To tell us a bit about this. I mean, uh, this is interesting. Yeah, yeah. the Met Records uh, <laughs> with very funny pictures on the cover. He looked like my sister, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Total space, you know. Too. Yeah, I was just listening. Yeah. Yeah. This was just then, uh, out of curiosity. You started to exploring different kinds of music besides the swing. That's true. Yeah. And there's always new things each time I have a concert, for instance, in about uh, on the 22nd of September here in Berlin mm -hmm. with a young piano player. Uh, he's, uh, we played a couple of times together. He's just playing outstanding and it's a very good combination with the two of us mm -hmm. play of course we have already repertoire mm -hmm. and but in between we listen so careful to each other it is just a poor pleasure mm -hmm. to to play with him mm -hmm. i'm looking forward for this evening mm -hmm. and so on so all those new things are in my head mm -hmm. and I hope it never stops. Yeah, perfect. And you're yeah. writing film scores, right? I, I saw I that. used to. Uh, mm -hmm. You the, used the, to. The whole, let's say the film scene or the TV scene changed completely. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mm -hmm. just don't have the time and I lost the connection, let's say, to the, it's a, it's a different bag altogether. You, uh, mm -hmm. you need the contact to uh, a film director whose feelings the same way, you know? Mostly they can't mm -hmm. express themselves, but they want for mm -hmm. a certain scene in, uh, in the film, you know, you have to get, mm -hmm. uh, Many times, I've, what do you have in mind? What kinds of music do you imagine? Or you have any examples you can play mm -hmm. for me? So, uh, mm -hmm. but this people doesn't, as I said, the same things, new people, which I don't know, and I don't have the time yeah. for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And another thing I would like to talk about is you have a very um, distinctive sound. Like when 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 we hear you play, it's it's um, we can we, we know that it is you if if we are familiar with your playing. Yeah, and that's was that something? Uh, the most important thing, I think. Exactly. The last three yeah. steps, uh, um, people recognize you or not. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's extremely important. You know, yeah, it is. And how did you achieve that? Was that something that was going on consciously for you, or, or it just happened because you played the way you played, or how did that happen? Um, actually, uh, it happened by itself within mm -hmm. the years. You know, but, but were you imitating Benny Goodman in your early days when you met him and things yes, like that? Yes, of course. Yeah, I have some. Mm -hmm all 78 records, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. it was a Benny Goodman sound, small mm -hmm. opening on the mouthpiece and very concentrated mm -hmm. sounds. 
But mm -hmm. I wanted to have a bigger and open up. And mm -hmm. then I met Buddy DeFranco and we became very close friends. I met him in Berlin mm -hmm. the year yep. 1954. And then we played together in the States. And matter of fact, we did an album with the radio big band in Frankfurt. Miss Eddie Daniels, Buddy and myself, and the big band. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I have to. That's, I have to yeah. that's a very interesting yeah. album, I think. The different styles, but yeah, it is, nevertheless, yeah. uh, nearby, but each one, Buddy was fascinating mm -hmm. through his sounds, too. You know, he was the first mm -hmm. one who really played bebop very well on mm -hmm. clarinet. You know, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah that's that's an interesting yeah. album. I I used to listen to that uh, in my early days. Uh, a red red cover, or it was in a red package. Red. The three sopranos, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this one. Yeah. Where did you see that in the internet? Well, I bought it. Well, I bought it uh, maybe 20 years ago. Oh, you, you know. even have it, yeah? Yeah, I, I have it, yeah. yeah. Very good. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting because it's so uh, obvious that th three unique voices, you can hear every time who is soloing. It's not just three guys playing the same instrument, but actually playing a different vocabulary. So and you really enjoy Very it. Very different. Yeah. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. So you you met Benny. You, this was in your late twenties or early twenties or thirties or. Pardon. When you when you met Benny Goodman, when you were with him in playing uh, with him. Exactly was... the end of the fifties. End of the fifties. Uh, yes, I emigrated fifty six, mm -hmm. and uh, fifty eight. Uh, I, I met first his brother in law. Mm -hmm. John Hammond. Yeah, right. He featured me quite a bit. Mm -hmm. I auditioned for him. Mm -hmm. And he was sitting about two meters away from me. And the piano player was a famous concert piano player, Beethoven player, Friedrich Gulda, mm -hmm. who played jazz just as well. Mm -hmm. And we both played, and he. Then his reaction was, I like what I hear. Mm -hmm. We can do something together. So yeah. this man, usually very difficult to meet, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, he was Columbia, the head of the Columbia Jazz Department mm -hmm. and things like that. Sure. And uh, there was a very good start, I must say. Mm -hmm. So he... he and, uh, over, and Benny, I never met through him. Mm -hmm. I met him through his former band boy, Popsy, was his name. Uh, he, later on, he didn't want to travel with Benny anymore. And she said to him, Benny, I have kids, I have a family, I want to stay in New York. I can't tour so much with you anymore. Mm -hmm. So Benny asked him, what would you like to do? I said, I would like to be a photographer, a photographer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so he helped him uh, to make uh, him a famous musician photo photographer. Mm -hmm. You know, he had everybody from this is the last Charlie Parker thing. Mm -hmm. He had anybody you can imagine before his camera. Mm -hmm. and. One day he asked me, uh, did Benny ever hear you? He mm -hmm. said, no, I don't think so. Um, so shall I talk to him? Uh, maybe he's interested to meet you or whatever. So he did. And three days later, his office called me if I would be willing to come to audition for him. Mm -hmm because he was just 
about to put a new big band together. Okay. And so there was a day uh, which was very important from then on and see two years. I could have stayed longer, but uh, you know, just being the member of the band and yeah. have the chance to play it doesn't bring you any further. You know, mm -hmm. you have to go your own way. And mm -hmm. he understood. And mm -hmm. Beautiful story. How it does so yeah, it's not it's a bad so natural. story. Yeah. yeah, it's not a bad one. That's true. <laughs> yeah, it's a. Uh... And, uh, so, uh, how the uh, other question to you yet is uh, how are the chances? Uh, suppose we would have not the Corona difficulties. How are the chances in Russia to play as a jazz musician? Um, like everywhere else, they, there are um, jazz clubs, bars. Um, yeah. There is a philharmonic hall. There are classical uh, venues. It's, um, it's a cultural city, so museums, uh, open air. Uh, last year, I I jammed on an open air festival that was happening not far from where I live. So yeah. I would say jazz is strong. It's, it's, it's strong here, yeah. It's, Are uh, normal like in any bigger city? Yeah, yeah, in, yeah. like in any. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely. And the personnel of the quartet, they are Russian guys. Well, uh, I just moved here um, permanently, let's say, uh, this year. And this year I was, I was touring in other countries, um, playing concerts, and I came in March back to St. Petersburg. And since then, uh, nothing is, is going on because... Co uh, Concerts are canceled or postponed, so mm -hmm. I just decided to do those interviews and and uh, do, do some other things in between. And you play in Switzerland, of course. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. yeah. Switzerland has a lot of things going on. Yeah, I'm sure you played many times there too. Uh, yeah, we are on tour, mm -hmm. more or less. Basel yeah. and uh, played in the club. Um, oh God, the first one. with Buddy together, by mm. the way. Uh, Moots in Zurich. Hmm? Moots in Zurich. Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's many the one. years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, do you know in Switzerland it was a German guy who played clarinet. Mm -hmm. uh, he played with Hesse Osterwald's band, mm -hmm. Ernst Hollerhagen. Right. Do you know the name? I know the name and did some recordings, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He is actually, let's say, uh, one of the best Goodman imitators. Yeah. Like Peanut Sacco, let's mm -hmm. say, this yeah. kind of uh, imitation. Yeah. yeah. But it stays an uh, imitation, of course, no matter how good, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so you felt that when you played with Benny that this is nice and everything, but you have to go back. You you moved back to, to Berlin or? Uh, no. Uh, you stayed no, no. there? No, no, I, I stayed up to 62. Mm -hmm. So I stayed almost two years longer mm -hmm. in the States. Um, I had different groups mm -hmm. and um, uh, one, Fabulous rhythm section with Jimmy Garrison on bass, Pete LaRocca on drums, mm. and John Bunch. There was a really good quartet mm -hmm. and uh, very enthusiastic musicians, mm. and uh, it was a pleasure. But in the long run, I have to think do I want to see the rest of my life? There in New York at the time had been in the Union local 802, mm -hmm. 30,000 musicians, 20,000, no work. Mm -hmm. Then I did a lot with Irving Green, with the trombone player. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, um, but a lot of more clubs were around at that time when you were much there. more. 
at the, moment, at the moment in Manhattan, up besides the situation we have, uh, mm. the Blue Notes and the Village, um, British Vanguard is still yeah. existing. Right. Then the New Birdland is on Eighth uh, Avenue and Forty uh, Six, Forty Seven Street, mm. but none had the atmosphere of the old Birdland. Okay. With P.V. Marquette, you know the little announcer. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> when we had, uh, had been on tour with with the Basie Band. Mm -hmm. And uh, Lester Young, Chet Baker, and so weiter. The colored people, nobody liked him <laughs> because when he, suppose they expect a good announcement, now the greatest, mm -hmm. the one and the only. Exactly. He wanted to have money for that. <laughs> so uh, if we give him 50 bucks, ah, okay. you know, he would make a good announcement. Show if we got him nothing, mm -hmm. he said, now. The next group is gonna be Ralph Kuhn and his quartet. So <laughs> I never gave him anything. <laughs> <laughs> so you and made a living playing the clubs at that time? Pardon? You, you made a living playing the jazz clubs in New um, York at that time? Among others. Or you did other things? Among other things. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to write Jingles for TV too, mm -hmm. composing and recording mm -hmm. and uh, for for instance for Lady mm -hmm. Stockings, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Haynes was the name of the uh, very well known, the most expensive one, and things like that besides the club work, you mm -hmm. know. If you have, mm -hmm. yeah, if, uh, if you let's say in the season, two clubs is already much. Let's say two weeks at Birdland, mm -hmm. and then uh, let's say six months later, uh, mm -hmm. maybe in small paradise in mm -hmm. Holland. It doesn't just we can do oh, not much more with the clubs, you know. Mm -hmm. But at least the engagements were longer than one nighters. That was a big plus at that during that time. Yeah, and uh, doing, let's say, weekend things mm -hmm. with every Green's Big Band in colleges, mm -hmm. dancings. Yeah. By the way, Guzman, he played many dance dance mm -hmm. evenings. Right. Mm -hmm. I remember one night, New Year's Eve night, in Aragon Ballroom in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's say it, the whole concert was uh, broadcasted. Uh, from coast to coast. Mm -hmm. Also, it was, let's say, it was exciting. <laughs> you know, yeah. right in the middle of all what you imagined before you came, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. of I guess there are a lot of, uh, I mean, there are a lot of interesting uh, Benny Goodman stories around that everybody knows from books like about his behavior but i'm sure we have many personal uh one made many personal ones maybe there is something funny that sticks out for you that you that you uh, remember vividly about his character uh, when you he were was, interacting with him he was extremely a moody guy you mm -hmm. know he changed his moods in a second mm -hmm. you know once he was laughing and all of a sudden something is irritating him. Mm -hmm. um, he was, let's say, altogether a very difficult person. Mm -hmm. you know. Somehow you made it, you, you could handle him or, or vice versa and, <laughs> and uh, play the same instruments then next to him, play with him, I mean... Just quite... already, uh, very, uh, he was listening carefully, let's yeah. say, oh. you know, and... Uh, once in his, uh, the most private thing was in his apartment, which is even if you can buy it right now. His daughter mm. is trying to sell it for nine and a half million dollars. His yeah. apartment, I would take it. Yeah. square meters, mm -hmm. a wonderful apartment. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
So if you have enough money, you can buy it. <laughs> Thanks for letting me know. <laughs> I give you <laughs> that advice. I will think about it. You will think about it. I will it. think about it. Yeah. Talk to your wife about it. So. <laughs> yeah, play some more gigs until I can afford it, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, but later on, you decided to have your own band. band uh, I mean, you always had your own bands and you yeah. started to, com to compose for that band, to have your own sound, your own voice. How did yeah. that trans transfer? I think that they talk about your own voice and right. the recognize mm -hmm. in, in a couple of bars. Mm -hmm. uh, that makes it different. There are many good players, you know, can play the instrument mm -hmm. and playing everything up and down. Uh, but to me, the most of the people, especially the people who are doublers with saxophones and mm -hmm. uh, uh, they're exchangeable in a way mm -hmm. because they play all good mm -hmm. with people. Mm -hmm. But not individually enough to be recognized, mm -hmm. right? You know. Mm -hmm. uh, what is your favorite player, Buddy, or let's say you must have people who impress you the most? Let's say we talk from the really great people. Artie Shaw, or Artie Shaw, of course, yes, Artie Shaw. It's, it's, it's Very individual. Very, yeah. This guy, you yeah. could recognize after one bar. Yeah. No, I he have a lot of. By the way, he played plastic already at the time. Really? He played, yeah. yeah, he played yeah. plastic creeds. Oh, unbelievable. Yeah. 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 I mean, even his one of his later recordings where he. Where he went into the bebop with uh with uh hank jones i think and i have an i don't remember the album but it's, it was always him it was always already that played no matter what what he, what he played it always had that that sound and that the way of playing uh, and the phrasing the phrasing and the uh, amazing control about the highest register right on the yeah. planet Unbelievable. You know, the famous solo by Stardust, for instance, mm -hmm. if he goes up to the B, mm -hmm. the, uh, it's amazing. And yeah. the B, very, very, very high, mm -hmm. is still singing and sounds yeah. good. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Yeah, that's yeah. a classic key. People used to say, uh, like, George, you all two played with him. Uh -huh. Many times, he said. Sometimes he went to a store, and he bought a mouthpiece. He used one, you know. Look, okay. Took it mm -hmm. home, and he did it himself. Made his own facing, uh -huh. and he sounded like <laughs> the old one. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> yeah. Very yeah. Did you meet? Did you meet him along your way? Unfortunately, not. No, no. And I, I read that you played. Uh, what was that? Tommy Dorsey. Uh, um, uh, the, 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 yeah, I played. Uh, up on, on that. One was year it? or two years, mm -hmm. I played with. Uh, uh, let's say the Dorsey Estate. <laughs> Rented the oh. whole material, the music, and uh, at different band leaders. Mm -hmm. Like Juan Covington, mm -hmm. uh, who was the uh, trombone player, a very good one, by the way, mm -hmm. uh, leading the band. And the Dorsey's, uh, long time they had been dead, and making money by. Uh, uh, this was a ghost band. It was a ghost band. Oh, okay. The, the, yeah, yeah, it was a ghost mm -hmm. band. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just, like Lane Miller, it's the mm -hmm. same body was for instance, leading the Miller Band, mm -hmm. eight years. Mm -hmm. And he really made something out of the band. The band sounds, one uh, just found an album mm -hmm. with completely no material. Yeah. And he played, he is solving 
Mm -hmm. It's like fantastic different bands. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. And what well, you can do. Yeah. Has a new arrangement of even in the mood. <laughs> the even in the number. mood. Bob, I think that they are. Ah. Yeah. yeah. Uh. And you wouldn't recognize the band. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Interesting. And when it comes to playing, when it comes to soloing, to work on the clarinet, what is your, what was your, or is still your, uh, your routine or the way you approach things? Do you play your songs right away when you no. take out the clarinet or you warm up classically or what's going on? Uh, with you? I choose the usual warm up long notes, mm -hmm. which is always good because mm -hmm. of the muscles, of course. Mm -hmm. And staccato all over the place, mm -hmm. and um, I never know I play, let's say, different connections uh, or the unusual connection of notes, mm -hmm. which uh, are not done simple to do and practice very, very, very slow. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. first one comes itself if you play long enough slow. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And, and what was that with that electric clarinet? Can we go back to that one for the total? Was that I, to was that on total space too, or or, or was no, it only the no, mad rock? It's not. Uh, uh, only the the mad rockers. Only mad rockers. So yeah. what was what was electric about that clarinet? Was it? Well, you could. Octave let's mm -hmm. say you get, uh, you could get lower a whole uh, eight okay. bars, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, one octave you... lower as usual, you can go, yeah. mm -hmm. and you can go one octave higher. Mm -hmm. Oh, so it sounds like a soprano, right? And how did you do that? You played. The normal clarinet and with a with a fact normal pedal? clarinet and uh, it's a, a little case where mm -hmm. you fumble around and uh, get mm -hmm. different colors. Let's say interesting. You, you did that a long time ago. When when when, when oh, was a long this? time ago? Uh, Do you remember the year? I'm I'm not sure what was uh, because these oh, days it's very common. Of I course. think maybe. Uh, uh, Mad rockers, I have the end of the 60s, something, something like that. I don't remember. Uh huh. 68, I have here. Mad uh, rockers. 68. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just found it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. How is it in. in uh, uh, you, you bought the music probably or the albums more in Switzerland, right? Not the three in Russia. Of, yes. I, I think that's the three. Three sopranos I, I bought in Switzerland when there were still CD shops around. Yeah, I yeah. understand. Yeah, yeah, but uh, well, who knows? I mean, uh, people start to like LPs again, but some some musicians start to record again on LPs. Who knows? And maybe everything comes in a comes and goes in a cycle. That would be would be nice. Yeah, uh, now a box came out last year with nine LPs, nine, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, LPs and not uh, CDs. Mm -hmm. And I must say, they are much further in mastering mm -hmm. right now. And of course, the sounds rounder, it sounds a little bit warmer than yeah. a CD. Not quite as loud as the CD, as we mm. know. You are limited with uh, with the power. Yeah. But I never the less I like the sounds. Yeah, LPs are great, and uh, yeah, in many regards, yeah. And uh, I I I saw um, there's a movie out about about the Kuhn brothers. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. That's is that a documentary that was filmed over many years and now put together? No, no, it was new, newly filmed. Newly filmed. Mm -hmm. And uh, won the Golden Medal 
mm-hmm. for documentary films in New York. Mm-hmm. Also amazing, very successful. Mm-hmm. And where can we see that movie? Huh? Where can we see that movie? I didn't see it. Well, it's uh, shows, let's see. The cinema? Different characters or outlooks of two different people, my brother and myself. Uh, it's, it's very, he's talking, I'm talking. And it's not a music film in this sense, but okay. about a portrait about two different people, actually, uh-huh. more or less. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But nevertheless, uh, it was a very good success, the film. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. And uh, what's what's your plan for today or for the next week or months? Are you is, uh, are you preparing something? for the twenty second? Ah, yeah, right. You mentioned mm-hmm. for the concert mm-hmm. and working harder. Yes, the last ten days, uh, the next ten days, mm-hmm. and I feel good. I'm um, I'm ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. How do you stay uh, so healthy? And is there an apple a day keeps the doctor away, or what are you doing to to be such in good shape and playing every day, two hours, and playing concerts still? Most of the time we stay home because uh, of the danger of the corona, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. leaving the house very seldom, except by concerts. Mm-hmm. The best thing is open air, not close up uh, mm-hmm. rooms. It's going to be, of course, in the winter time now, the concert. Yeah. I don't know yet how we're going to do this. Mm-hmm. But I don't want to miss them, of course. You know. sure. I, I, was, I was interested in your recipe. What keeps you so healthy and, and full, of, full, full of energy being uh, all, already in your 90s? Um, something yes. that you learn from uh, diet or something you're doing? Uh, or? Discipline, no mm-hmm. alcohol, mm-hmm. none. And um, well, I think it's up in the head. Mm-hmm. And uh, just love what you're doing, basically. Yeah, and mm-hmm. act the same way like 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, I realize it's a present, you know. Other people in this age, mm-hmm. uh, they hardly can work or whatever, mm-hmm. and sit in, in a wheelchair and can't move anymore, and mm-hmm. the head uh, is not working correctly anymore. Mm-hmm. So, actually, I consider myself lucky. Yeah, it's a presence. It's a presence, mm-hmm. I think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, it was uh, very you nice. You don't have this worries. You have 50 years in front of you. I <laughs> guess. Let's see about that. <laughs> <laughs> May I ask you how old you are? Uh, I'm 36. 36, right. the best age. Yeah. The next 15 years going to be great. I will. Try to remember your words. <laughs> yeah. Are you, you had been in Germany too? Did you work in Germany? Yes, I had, for example, the pleasure, uh, the great Thilo Wagner piano player invited me to play with Emil Mangelsdorf in that Burghausen Schlesschen once. A Burghausen? Yeah. I don't know. Already? A Burghausen oh. uh, is the festival, yeah. No, I, I, I'm mistaken. It's some, I played some locations in Germany, yeah. Played some concerts um, because it's so close to Switzerland, yeah. And yeah. much bigger territory, of course. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So when are you yeah. going to be the next time in Switzerland? Who knows? I, I don't know. We'll see about depends. borders. It depends, yeah. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'm here right now and uh, see how things develop. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And hopefully invite you when this is over to St. Petersburg again to play some jazz together. Yeah, I would love to. Yeah, yeah. Oh, of course. Great. 
Mm -hmm. Well, I, I wish you all the best for that concert that is coming up for you and Thank your you. birthday party. <laughs> There's just going to be no party, believe me. <laughs> no, no alcohol. No. That, As a yeah. day like any other. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yes. But anyhow, very mm -hmm. nice. Thank you very much for taking your time. My pleasure, Rolf. Thank you very much for and talk. Hopefully, we meet in person. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Great. Super. Okay. When you're okay. nearby, don't hesitate to call. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. I will do that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. See you later. Yeah. See you Thank later. Thank you. Danke dir. In mm -hmm. the full sense. Yeah. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.